Amanda, is there any reason to not call this meeting to order? No, please call it to order. Okay. We'll call to order the Gilder Redevelopment Commission meeting for Wednesday, November 15th, 2017. Uh, we'll ask staff for a roll call. Ryan Hamilton. Here. Tyler Hudgens. Here. Tyler Jones. Here. Mark Barlow. Peter Shaka. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Um, we will move on to communications from citizens. At this time, members of the public may comment on matters not on the agenda, and the Commission's response is limited to responding to criticism, asking staff to review a matter commented upon, or asking that a matter be put on a future agenda. Do we have any, I do not have any cards in front of me. Do we have any communications from citizens that would fit into this part of the agenda? I do not see any, so we will move on to our administrative items. And item, agenda item number one, oaths of office, to swear in Tyler Hudgens and Ryan, as chair, and Ryan Hamilton as vice chair. Mr. Chairman, I've asked if Councilmember Cook could do that because I haven't got my reading glasses to read the uh, oath, so he's going to do it for me. I, okay. <laughs> well, it is a tremendous pleasure to have the honor to lead you here on the oath of office. So I hear you're just switching spots here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> with that. All right. Tyler, we're going to begin with you. If you could be so kind to repeat after me. I, Tyler Hudgens, I, Tyler Hudgens do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution, of the, United States the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona, and the ordinances of the town of Gilbert, and the ordinances of the town of Gilbert Maricopa, County, Arizona, Maricopa County, Arizona, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and, I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the Office of Redevelopment Commission Chair in Gilbert, Arizona, in Gilbert, Arizona according, to the best of my ability. according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Do you have like a few words that you would like to share yeah. about this role and all that? Yeah, I'll just say it's uh, been a complete honor to serve uh, this last year on the Redevelopment Commission. Um, owning a business in downtown Gilbert's been a great pleasure. Um, I have, I've lived in Gilbert my whole life. Um, and I remember going down to downtown Gilbert um, and seeing the only thing there was really Joe's Real Barbecue and Norwood Furniture. And so it's been amazing to watch it grow over the years. And uh, I worked at Joe's Real Barbecue and Liberty Market. And so it's just been amazing to see where it's come and to have the honor to serve on the commission and and help make our town even more better. Well, we thank Tyler for that. I, I've known Tyler when he was like 
a teenager. Well, and I think he's still a teenager. Uh, what, let's do this. Let's invite your family up. Take a quick picture. Would that be all right? Maybe you can introduce your family. All right, so this is uh, my mother. She gave birth to me. <laughs> my dad and my brother Carson, so. And then normally, we give a round of applause for you taking on this new role as chair. <laughs> Our next victim. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I've known Ryan for a long time since uh, when I was a liaison on, the, on this board. And you've just been fantastic. I appreciate you saying yes to the vice chair role as well. So with this, Ryan, I, Ryan Hamilton, I, Ryan Hamilton do, solemnly do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the United States. and the Constitution and laws, the Constitution and laws. Of, the of, of the state of Arizona and the ordinance, ordinances, of the ordinances of the town of Gilbert, Maricopa County, Arizona, Maricopa County, Arizona, that I will bear true faith, bear true faith and, allegiance and allegiance to the same, and defend them against all enemies, against all foreign, and foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully, will faithfully and impartially, and impartially discharge, the discharge the duties of the Office of Redevelopment Commission Vice Chair, Vice Chair. in Gilbert, Arizona, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. No words? No, this is my, my second stance, <laughs> my second stand, so it's probably remedial, so I'll do it right this time. Any family, any, any special yeah. folks that wanted to come up here to the front? Can we get a picture, Elise? Yeah, sure. All right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and don't leave yet, because you have to sign on a dotted line. They have to sign this document to be official. Mr. Jones, you're next. Well, since this is going to be your first night here, I hear, maybe you can let the public know a little bit about you. Would that be all right? Sure. So uh, I'm Tyler Jones. I uh, originally am from Mesa and went to school here, went to ASU, um, went on to do a master's uh, in Utah, and then spent about eight years living in San Francisco, uh, working in real estate investments around the world. I work for a uh, Swiss private equity investment firm. and. Uh, I currently now work with investors, uh, institutional investors such as pension funds and insurance companies uh, throughout Latin America. So I'm actually just coming back directly from uh, the airport uh, in Mexico City this morning. And, uh, and I'm excited to be part of the uh, RDC 
and hopefully uh, some of my experience in real estate can be useful um, as uh, we get going here with some projects. But uh, it's something that I am passionate about. I have three daughters, and uh, this is somewhere that we want to call home and uh, plan to be here for a long time. Well, thank you, sir. I know the pay is really a lot here, so <laughs> don't spend it in one place. But we thank you for your, your, your willingness to say yes to serve our community in this capacity. With that, I, Tyler D. Jones, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona and the ordinances of the town of Gilbert, Maricopa County, Arizona, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of the Town of Gilbert Redevelopment Commission member in Gilbert, Arizona, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, Howard. Thank you. Round of applause. And picture time. At this time, we'll go ahead and move on to administrative item number three and consider approval of minutes for the regular meeting held on October 18th, 2017. Do I see any motions? Uh, I'll move to approve the minutes for the regular meeting held on October 18th, 2017. I second that. Okay. Um, vote on that. All those say aye. 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 Okay, yeah, with that. Um, do we have any opposed? Seeing none. Um, with that, the community minutes from October 18th pass. Administrative item number four, um, we're going to consider the approval of minutes for the study session held on October 18th, 2017. Do I see a motion for that approval at this time? Uh, yeah, I'll move to, cons to approve the minutes of the study session held October 18th, 2017. I second the motion. Seeing that there are no opposing votes, we will go ahead and approve those minutes from October 18th, 2017. We will now open this portion of the meeting up for public hearing. During the public hearings, anyone wishing to comment in support of or in opposition to a public hearing item may do so. If you wish to comment on a public hearing item, you must fill out a public fo comment form indicating the item number on which you wish to be heard. Once the hearing is closed, there will be no further public comment unless requested by a member of the commission or board. Uh, public uh, hearing item number five, DR 17 11 12. Um, we look forward to discussing that issue now. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of Redevelopment Commission. I'm Amy Thames with the Planning Department. And this computer is different than typical, so give me one second. Oh, hmm. Okay. All right, well, it's full up there and halfway on my screen, so I'll just go with it. So um, we are here this evening, this evening to discuss Gilbert Marketplace. Gilbert Marketplace is marked here in parcels A and B, and it is located at the southwest corner of Gilbert Road and Vaughn Avenue. Um, it is property that is owned by the town of Gilbert, and there is a development agreement that has been entered to with LGE developers to uh, develop both parcels A and B, and that's what we are discussing. Um, 
just some basic facts on the property. It's a, a total of 0.77 acres, if you combine the two. We're looking at 40,900 some square feet of a four-story office building on parcel A. And on parcel B, we're looking at approximately 4,800 square feet of internal space on um, for sort of a, a restaurant um, component on site B. So site A is office and site B is a restaurant, sort of a co-op, sort of a, an interesting um, layout with some um, various vendors inside and um, sort of self-serve kind of new uh, co-op style of dining, which is going to be quite interesting addition to downtown. The four-story office building will have commercial on the first floor with outdoor patio areas. Um, it could be commercial, it could be restaurant, it could be a combination of entertainment, and then upstairs is, is office. And on up on the fourth floor, there is a, a deck area also. So just, just a little bit of uh, a rundown of it. As we move forward, you can see on the site plan, um, I'm going to go back to the, the colored one. It's a lot easier to read. You can see here on site B, I'll just start with the small one first. There's a nice 20-foot wide patio out front. It's at zero at the property line, which is preferred by the town in their development guidelines for the Heritage District. Um, the internal space. And then you have a 700-some square foot rear patio space that um, will have a green screen around it for some interest. And we'll look at that as we move into the elevations across the alley with a walkway, and then you're over to site A, which um, the main entrance is out here on Vaughn. There is a large patio space out there. Um, we're looking at around um, 1,500 to 1,600 square foot of patio space, which will be nice. Roll-up doors here, roll-up doors on parcel B, possibly, depending on, it is shown on the elevations, but of course it could vary based on what the tenants and the tenant improvements are, so if something needs to change, we can administratively do that. And then um, over here, there's a main entrance into the building as you go up the main staircase and elevator core up to the upper floors. Bike parking out here on the side. One of the conditions of approval in your staff report is shifting this bike parking to maybe under here, under the trees where we have some hardscape so that this walkway um, wouldn't get blocked by bikes, which is the main walkway up and around the building. So there are ramps and stairs and, and planters that you can see here. The streetscape has been um, compliant with the development guidelines. Um, for the plant materials, for tree wells, for the various hardscape pavement, and uh, other accessory features that are in your packet, such as ben benches and refuse containers. As we move forward, um, just those were just some details on the site. One thing I will point out, um, and I'm going to pop forward real fast to the landscape plan so you can see it a little better. One of the big issues in this downtown area has been dumpsters. If you've ever been out here behind Hale Theater, you know that there's sort of a collection of garbage dumpsters that are back there. And what this is going to give us is a compactor at the back of Building B that will be shared by the businesses in the area that will help to alleviate this dumpster gathering place. <laughs> so um, it is at the back of Building B. And one of the things as we go forward with the elevations, we're going to talk about some of the aesthetics in there. But typically what is required with the development um, guidelines is a 12-foot walkway landscape pedestrian path area that runs up the back of this alley with the alley so that pedestrians can either walk on Gilbert Road or come up the alley. And typically what we've seen in the past with the other businesses in the area is about a five to six foot sidewalk and then the remainder is landscape with trees and shrubs and other um, such ground cover. And with the compactor size and the way it needs to be and what the requirements are with the town public works department, it just fits in there without impacting the alley. And so one of the things that we brought forward at study session back in August when we, we um, brought this uh, was that there can't be any landscape. So you're going to see some trees here and then there's no landscape for the width of building B because that compactor area does come out almost to the edge. It allows for the six foot sidewalk, but there's no room for any other ground cover, no vines, nothing. It's, it's as tight as it can be, but that compactor is so important to fit in here on this site. So we asked that if we could deviate from the guidelines, there is a, there is a clause within the development guidelines that says, if there is good reason to deviate from the guidelines, that the redevelopment commission has the authority to do so. So one of the things we asked at study session was, are you okay with deviating from that? And we got the nod yes. And one of the things proposed so that 
it just wasn't a flat door, it wasn't just an uninteresting garbage enclosure, is that they're going to paint a mural on that. So there's going to be some decorative artwork done. It's not selected as of yet. It is um, at the purview of the applicant to either do painted art or metal art on those doors. And uh, staff is uh, amenable to that design idea. Also, to just sort of soften it up a little bit, considering that that is, a, you know, 30 feet of hardscape, um, is the green wall that I mentioned here. It's kind of just shown with a little green line, but uh, you'll see it in the elevations. It is going to be a full length, 20 foot length of green wall, and it's going to have an artificial plant up on the wall that is of nice, of nice quality, and it's going to just be as though a vine was growing up all the way across the wall. Um, and that will just help soften that back space because they're really, with the canopy coming out from the building and the compactor and the requirements for fire and the requirements for refuse, there just wasn't any place to put landscape. As much as I love landscape, there just wasn't anywhere for it to go. And after a lot of discussions, we just decided this was the best alternative. Um, and then out here in the front, there is a, some planters along the front patio space just to soften the, a little bit. Gilbert Road, there's not a lot of room for street trees and such out there, but you can see here over on Vaughn, it is lined with the appropriate street tree and also on ash, and then wrapping the back of the building. So, and there's also raised planters that are occurring that you can see in these green lines around the building. So landscape was put in in a very urbanized manner, um, and staff is um, in agreement with how it was uh, appropriated throughout the site. As far as drainage, uh, drainage flows to a collection um, system that is in Vaughn Avenue and taken to a group retention area um, that is for the whole, all of downtown area. And um, so there's no outstanding issues with grading and drainage. Cross sections if you need them. And then as we move forward to talk about buildings and building materials. Um, building A is predominantly smooth red brick with a dark gray and black metal accents. Clear glass on the first floor, possibly roll-up doors occurring um, where restaurants or retail would need it. Otherwise, there'll be the glass door fronts looking similar to those doors with regular man doors. And then um, gray glass on the upper floors with some reflective and spandrel glass as needed. Um, the accent colors of EFIS are predominantly silver and white paint. Awnings are a minimum of seven foot. Patio covers 20 foot in depth. And one of the comments and discussions that occurred at study session was the south elevation here, which faces Hale Theater, which is the back of house for this building. And there is some parking that is uh, provided under here, nine parking spaces sort of under a cantilevered area. And there wasn't a lot of aesthetic decoration on the rear of the building. You can see on the front of the building, there's quite a lot of brick, there's a lot of metal, there's a lot of articulation, there's a deck up on the first floor that adds a lot of character. And then on the back, they're just, it was fairly gray in, at study session. And what the applicant did to address those comments was that they added um, a pier coming up in brick and then continuing on as a pilaster up above. And there's some up and down lighting on these columns. So at night, there's some interesting qualities occurring. So uh, staff was uh, pleased that the applicant did take the input into consideration and add some additional features. But you can see out here on the front where the canopy faces Vaughn Avenue, the storefront windows. Um, one of the things that we did bring up at study session was there is a requirement in the development design guidelines that the storefront be 75% glass. When you do the measurements on this, we're at 66%. However, for a building of this height and proportion to narrow those piers in support of the columns that are in brick would start to look a little weak. And we were concerned that if we did it for the sake of meeting a number, were we taking away from the architecture and quality of the building? And after discussing it with the Redevelopment Commission, uh, they agreed that it was adequate and it was a good storefront that did meet the intent of the design guidelines. So once again, under that clause, we are asking that 66% be allowed. As far as the side views, you can see the articulation wraps around for at least three quarters of the building and then transitions to the more similar to the south elevation. Um, and we feel that the overall character is um, maintained. The screening for the mechanical on the roof was discussed at study session and was found to be adequate and in keeping with the style, colors, and material of the building. 
there is the perspective of the building. So you can see this would be looking toward the southwest. So you're on Vaughn, and the alley is to the left, and Vaughn is to the right. And this is what it would look like with the deck up above. So the deck kind of creates a step back and a little bit of character up there. And who knows who might lease that space. So it could be a very interesting um, location. And we have the floor plan if we need to discuss anything particularly about the floor plans. In building B, so the buildings are not identical. As you can clearly see, there's no red brick on this building. It is painted block in faded gray, which is a very, very light gray, um, with a wood-like soffit under the front canopy, decorative, um, I call them festival lights, um, that are sort of leading the way into the restaurant. On the, I'm gonna go to the elevations. On the north side, facing oregano, uh, you can see that there's these large gray blocks. Those are gonna be painted in with a mural. The development guidelines does allow that a mural be on one side of a building in downtown. Um, it is art as long as it does not reflect the use in the building. So if they put wine and cheese all over it and it's a wine and cheese restaurant inside, there's gonna be a problem because that's a sign. But if they wanna put daisies all over it, that's perfectly fine, that's art. And we're not gonna police the art and it is up to the applicant to decide what kind of art they wanna put on the side of the building as long as it's within municipal code and good taste. Um, you can see here the green screen wall that is on the back patio space that will add a little bit of softening there. All the mechanicals hidden behind the parapet roof and staff has no outstanding issues with this building as proposed. You can see the character here in the perspective view with um, snooze next door. Lighting, lighting meets the, the requirements of the town of Gilbert. Uh, they did provide cut sheets for the lighting just so we could see. It's a little bit more modernistic flair, not as traditional, but we feel that uh, it blends in well with the character of the buildings and overall. Staff recommendations. You can see there were a few I added. I did point out some of them. Uh, one was, I didn't point out, was undergrounding electrical lines. Another was continuing a water easement and such, and then the others I did point out. Um, the applicant is aware of these conditions of approval and there's no outstanding uh, concerns that I'm aware of that they have with them. So with that being said, we would recommend approval to the Redevelopment Commission. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you this evening. Thank you. Do we have any questions this time? I do. Just curious, does this building by chance meet LEED certification standards? Not to my knowledge, it does not. Okay. And is that something that uh, the Planning Commission, I mean, is that important uh, that you look for in, in buildings here in Gilbert? It is not a requirement under any of our codes. So you, right there at the end, you answered my question, Mike. It was about the status of these conditions of approval, whether or not the, the applicant was on board. It sounds like they've all been vetted and there's no, I guess for lack of a better word, controversy with respect to the conditions of approval. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and the applicant is here this evening. If you have any questions or you'd like him to verify that, he would be happy to do so. Okay. And then if, from, from a procedural standpoint, I'll defer to staff here and maybe the town attorney. Do we need to incorporate into our motion the, the, these deviations that are being requested or is just the approval of the case incorporate those? And I guess the same for the conditions of approval. They are listed in your staff report. So if you just read what is listed in the motion of approval, um, you can say including the conditions as listed okay. as typically suffice. And do these two specific deviations we're allowing, do those need to be specifically articulated or just approval of the case incorporates those? Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, the approval of the case with the conditions as she said would be sufficient. Okay, okay, thank you. I don't have any questions. I think the heavy lifting was done during the study session, so I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at. Yeah, and would you mind um, showing, I just saw the Hale Theater, uh, they're expanding to their property line. Um, the, the new design looks good on the back end, but I'm just curious kind of where that's gonna go um, so we have some perspective there. Certainly, I'm gonna go back to one of these color plans. So Hale Theater is most of the expansion of Hale Theater is out here on the west side of the building. They are enclosing a rear utility yard, as I'll call it, back here. The shared access drive, which is wide enough so that if they do build to the line one day, which the line is kind of right there where you kind of see the dark shadow occurring, um, there's still... Where is it? I can't see. Right? I don't know if I can see your mouse. Or... Can you see the mouse? Oh, we're supposed to point with the mouse, and now the mouse doesn't show on this new one. Um, 
So you see the gray line that uh, separates the light gray from the dark gray at the back of the, the building A? You see the trees, and then there's gray, and then it gets light. Yeah. That line going straight across there is pretty much the property line. So Hale has, Theater has about, I believe, 16 foot on their side of a driveway, and then on this side, parcel A side, we maintain the 25 foot requirement um, so that if in the future Hale decides to build to their property line, there is still an adequate driveway that allows two-way flow of traffic. So we didn't build ourselves into a corner where all of a sudden now we can't park back there or the applicant and their tenants can't park back there because there's not enough room. So because we weren't sure at the time this project started what Hale Theater was going to propose, um, we made sure that that drive was extra wide. So they're going to do a utility yard at the back facing toward the north. There's no other expansion to my knowledge. The parking spaces at Hale Theater in the back aren't changing. And then there's a little bit of addition on the east side and then the, the south side is gonna have this big marquee and then a large portion is being added to the west side of Hale Theater. So really what you see in the picture here really isn't all changing very, very much at all other than adding a little bit of wall for the yard. Okay. And then one more question, the lighting. You mentioned there's gonna be lighting on the back side. Mm -hmm. um, how's that gonna run and where are those gonna be? Certainly. All right, I can't point with the mouse again. So on the, on the gray columns going upward, there is at the first floor, basically around the base of the window, pointing up to the third floor, top of the window, pointing down, there's two little lights that are gonna illuminate that blaster. And so each of those are going to be illuminated with those decorative lights. It'll just add a little bit of definition at night. I like that. Can you comment on building B? Uh, I didn't notice any signage on there. So I guess uh, when, when does that come into play? Thank you for asking that. Um, Mr. Chair, members of Redevelopment Commission, signage is a separate approval. It is done administratively unless they're asking for, there are certain signs that are, must come back to the Redevelopment Commission. But um, if they're within the purview of, or if they're, if they're meeting code, uh, the staff can go ahead and do administrative approval on a heritage sign program. Any building that um, has multi-tenant in downtown area pretty much needs a heritage sign program. So we would be anticipating they come in as a separate, a separate application, whether they come in as two individual ones or as a heritage sign program as one, either would be acceptable. Do we have any other questions this time? Okay, seeing none, um, if any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, this would be your opportunity to do so. I don't have any cards in front of me right now. Seeing none, I'll take a motion on this agenda item. Want to take a crack at it? Want me to do it? All right. All right, I move to approve the findings and approve DR 17-1112, uh, including the enumerated conditions of approval um, for Gilbert Marketplace, parcels A and B. I move to second the motion. Having received uh, a second on the motion, I move to see, are there any ayes? Aye. Aye. Okay. Seeing no opposed, we have approved this motion for DR 17 11 12, Gilbert Market Buildings A and B. Um, and now we will go on to public hearing item number six, UP 17 1034, which is the Heritage District Parking Garage number two. Thank you, Commissioner Hud Hudgens and uh, Planning Commissioners. Let's see if it comes up here. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is, as you mentioned, UP 171034. It's the Heritage District Parking Garage. Um, you reviewed this at the study session last month. Just to kind of break down what the request is. There's uh, multiple applications on this project. There's a use permit to allow the use for a a parking facility in the Heritage Village Center Zoning District, which is what we're entertaining this evening. There's also a design review application, which you reviewed at last month's study session, and that'll come back to you in December. Um, so we, last study session, we had comments on both. Um, just wanted to make sure we separated out. This is just the use permit application, not the DR. You'll see that again. Um, I should have put this slide up because uh, it's the uh, timeline that I just kind of talked through. but. Um, 
last month study session and then the, this month the, um, the actual hearing for the use permit you'll make a recommendation to the planning commission um, for this use permit and so then they'll hear it on the de their december uh, 6th hearing so uh, site is 1.2 acres it's located east of the northeast corner of uh, gilbert and vaughn road you can see from the site plan here that the let me see if that yeah, it doesn't show up. Um, Hearn and Brycop are those two, uh, is the kind of L-shaped public street that's going to be constructed with these in, with these infrastructure improvements. There's also a development agreement with the, between the town and the yard there that you can see that half acre site to the west of this site. Um, that all these construction projects will be going on potentially at the same time. The yard you'll also you'll see in December as a DR application, but. Um, our site in particular for the use permit is the site outlined there in red, the 1.2 acres. Access to it will be the main, the primary access to the parking garage is off of Vaughn on the southwest corner of this. Um, the parking facility north is up, of course. And the Hearn and Brycomp improvements are uh, pedestrian plaza, valet, uh, access circulation on the west side of the, of the parking garage, but that's predominantly for valet. Um, after hours, the public will be able to access that, but the primary public entrance to the parking garage is on the southwest corner. Uh, five decks, uh, about 597 spaces total in it, and um, there's the building footprint is approximately 42,000 square feet. Um, so in terms of the use permit, there's a number of you know, development standards that have to be met, findings of facts, part of the use permit outlined in your staff report, there's four of them that staff has to make and, and you have to make for your recommendation. Um, and I detailed that in your staff report. Staff believes they've met all these findings of fact, um, their development standards and, and so forth. Um, and so um, we would recommend that you move to recommend approval to the Planning Commission for the use, uh, the parking facility use on this site. So I'd take any questions. Do we have any questions this time? I don't have any questions. Okay, seeing none. Uh, if the, any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, this would be the opportunity to do that. I do not have any cards at the moment. Seeing none, I will look for a motion on this agenda item. <laughs> I motion to approve item UP171034. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing none, this motion approves. Um, at this time, uh, this now concludes the public hearing portion of the agenda. We will move on to communications, uh, report from chair on current or future events. I do not have anything at this time. So we'll go ahead and move on to report from our council liaison on current and future events. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of things. Uh, first, just a reminder that this weekend is Gilbert Days, and we'd encourage you to, to take part in that in any way that you can. Um, bring your family down to the parade, go to the rodeo, whatever, but uh, uh, whatever it takes. Uh, also, just to let you know that at our last, I think it was our last regular council meeting, we did direct the staff to reactivate our uh, arts and culture uh, task force. And the, um, there are several different tasks that we're looking for them to do, one of which is looking at a new bridge here in town and some artwork on that. But I also would like to see them look at some of the artwork that we, some of the things we've even talked about tonight. Uh, not to mandate things, but to at least take a look at it and see what might be appropriate, have people consider that, as, uh, which is what we decided to do with that task force, let them uh, take a shot at that. So. Um, they are now, staff is now working on in, in process of bringing uh, that, that task force back to us. Uh, lastly, we'd like to, uh, I just received this week a letter, um, an email actually, a resignation by uh, Mark Barlow, and I just wanted to express our um, appreciation for all the work that he has done with the company. He's probably been one of the longest tenured members on the commission that uh, I know of anyway, 
Uh, so we, uh, he will be missed, uh, and we really do appreciate his participation. His resignation was, would be effective. Looking again for a new member. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With that, do we have any uh, report from commissioners on current or future events? Nothing from me. Okay, seeing none. Uh, report from our staff liaison on current and future events. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. I just have one item I wanted to update you all on. So we are continuing to move forward with our redevelopment plan and master plan update. And our consultant will be meeting with stakeholders both November 30th and December 1st. So we have 11 working stakeholder groups. So that includes everyone from residents, merchants, the redevelopment commission, council, uh, staff, and essentially anyone who, who really touches the Heritage District. So the first uh, working group will be focused on identifying the top three issues and areas of concern within the Heritage District that we want this particular consultant to focus on and then discuss study priorities um, and expectations. So that's really the purpose of this first stakeholder group session. Um, there will also be a meeting with the public held on the evening of November 30th. So you are welcome to attend that in addition to the Redevelopment Commission Working Group. That's all I have. Thank you, Amanda. Um, with all that, our agenda has been exhausted and we adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.